HD Zero's new all-in-one is here. This takes the new Eco release that was released recently and combines it with an all-in-one whoop board. This is it, guys. And it contains the new all-in-one board, which is the true all-in-one. That's right, HD Zero is diving into the flight controller and receiver game. It has the flight controller, the electronic speed controller, the Express LRS receiver, the HD Zero board, and the camera connection all in one. This is the only board that you're gonna need, and this could be the future of all small crafts. And if you thought it looks a lot like the recent Eco release, you are correct. But what do you notice right away? The Eco release is two layers tall because the video transmitter is its own separate board above. That means that this is going to save you just over four grams of weight. They're actually going with a lot of weight savings. They have the new HQ prop on here, moving away from the gym fan that they were using prior. They have the very thin dipole. It doesn't have that metal thing on there that adds weight. Look at the bottom. We've actually transitioned over to using these plastic screws which save a tiny bit of weight. If you are a weight watcher, there's not a ton that you can do other than maybe changing your wire out for that magnet wire, but that's pretty sketchy. They've done a pretty good job making the wire links fairly nice and tight. Let's go over some comparisons from some other popular builds. Air 65 coming in at 16.8 grams. That's after I've done a few special modifications of my own. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. 533 Racing loop 17.1 grams that i purchased from them that one has the nice full compatibility of the team black sheep video transmitter and plastic screws custom five in one air five that i built up with the pinch camera and the rcn power motors 16.1 grams pretty dang light here we're switching over to hd here's the hd zero eco whoop that comes in at 23 and a half grams 19.4 grams with the race version with the new all-in-one board. Now there's a couple of things that we're gonna need to know in regards to what type of market penetration this is gonna have. Remember the Eco Mobula 6 that we had on the channel? This is the next version of that and it only has one board. This one has the Tiny Whoop all-in-one with the Eco board, two layers, but this one only has that single board and it knocks off an entire four grams now four grams doesn't sound like a lot of weight but when you start out at 23 and a half grams and go down to 19 and a half grams that is pretty substantial that's like going from a racing quad from a 320 gram quad that we used to fly back in 2018 all the way down to a modern racing quad which can be as low as 250 260 grams with the props bmi 270 gyro on board the stm32 f411 processor the esc that's built in can handle five Five amps. It runs D-Shot 600. The motors are 0702 28,000 kV. The video transmitter HD0 board on there is capable of doing 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts and has Express LRS built in the SPI version. So all you have to do is go into Betaflight and enter your buying phrase directly there and hit save and you're connected. This takes 1S batteries only so you're not going to be able to build up any tiny trainers or any other more powerful quads without the motor plugs it only weighs 5.7 grams that's for all of your electronics now this race version comes with the eco camera but they're also going to make a freestyle version with a slightly heavier but higher quality Lux camera. Sounds so luxurious. Now, could something like this be the future of Tiny Whoop Racing? One of the things that we're running into issues with is these all-in-one boards are so convenient, so inexpensive, but they don't put out clean video broadcast. The video channel bleeds into the neighboring channels so that if you're racing with four people in the air and one person is running one of these analog versions, you're actually blinding the other people around you. And that's why these inexpensive all-in-one boards like the Air 65 are banned at many races. So could this be the future of Tiny Whoop Racing? What if you could get four, five, six people flying at once? A lot of those Tiny Whoop races are so popular there's so much money on the line that a lot of racers come to try to get their hand at it, but they have to run sometimes as few as three to four people at once, meaning that the race takes an extremely long amount of time. What if we could race on one of these? That presents a little bit of a problem, and that's because racing with this would be perfect for video, but at 19 and a half grams, this thing is 
almost five grams heavier than some of the lightest builds that people are building for tiny boat racing. You wouldn't be able to compete with this much extra weight at the highest levels. So what's the solution? Maybe if we made a spec racing formula that used this, then the race could go much faster. Do you think any of the Tiny Whoop Racing diehards would be willing to give up a little bit of performance so that everyone's on equal playing field, everyone has better video, and you have much better video feeds for spectators? One of the more popular things that has been done in both Arizona and California is that they've made negotiations with Dave & Buster's, and they're holding semi-weekly races inside of Dave & Buster's. What a great way for us to introduce new people to the hobby. When you come to Dave & Buster's, you spend your real money, but you leave with Dave & Buster's, okay? That gives you incentive to come back to Dave & Buster's because it's the only place where your money works. Then having a night out for some games and drinks and bowling and seeing a tiny drone race going on. Having HD zero feeds means that people are going to be much more attracted to that than seeing analog feeds, which sometimes are off-putting for people that are not familiar with FPV. The all-in-one board itself is going to go for $99 at release. This race binder fly is going to go for $189. So it's basically twice the price of the analog version, but you get something that can't really be measured in cost, which is the ability to actually see where you're going. Upgrading to one of these is like having LASIK for your FPV feed, be able to see it much, much clearer. Now keep in mind that these small Eco and Lux cameras both use the four wire method, not a MIPI cable and connector. So the quality of the image is gonna be slightly less than your standard HD zero camera, but still higher than analog. What do you think in the comments, guys? Is this the answer? One thing that some people are gonna be worried about is if you kill anything here, this is the entire entire thing. You're out a hundred bucks. But so far, I haven't put enough packs on it to really talk about the long-term reliability, but so far it's been pretty good on that limited packs. I'm going to probably fly Race Scow on this for HD and Race Scow on this for regular analog classic womb game and see which one does better. So stay tuned. Race Scow version three is in signups right now. Sign up to be able to win a ton of prizes. I actually won a bunch of prizes during Race Scow. I won a bunch of props, a bunch of frames, and a bunch of other goodies just by participating. No, I wasn't fast enough to actually win one of the competitions but there's a ton of raffles during that so it's free to enter go sign up right now at the link below thanks guys Close the book, these are changing times I'll never break through your barricades